Okay. Uh, apologies for the technical glitch that cost us the recordings of the classes yesterday. So I'm going to try to do this uh, these four problems rather quickly because um, uh, rather than us picking them up in class tomorrow. So b I'm almost positive that everybody got through one and two, but let's just get the numbers down and I'll walk through them as quickly as I can. So for the first one, I won't spend any time. The key to this is we want everything in the same dollars. So what we're going to choose is to put them in December 2010, January 2011 dollars. You can put them in any dollars you want, but you guys just got to make sure you, we know exactly what point it is so that we're always comparing um, the same dollars to the same dollars. So if he takes option one and he takes it in December, withdraws it in December, and again we're, we're ignoring any kind of withholding that the government imposes, then what he ends up with in pocket is ten thousand dollars minus the tax on that ten thousand dollars which is forty three forty we ignore the time value of money if he if between there and uh, so getting it out in in december and paying the tax in april we'll ignore that time value of money because it's constant across the two options and so he's left with fifty six sixty if he takes it in january then sorry january then he will end up with ten thousand dollars again at, a, at essentially the same time but this time he will end up with forty three forty and have to pay tax so the negative will be smaller um, because he essentially gets to hold on to it for an, a year longer and so he ends up with more in pocket okay so the smell test is if he pays tax later he should end up with more in today's dollars in his hands and in fact, he does. Okay, so that's the difference of timing. Now, what about the difference in rates? So again, we want to keep the same dollars as in the previous question. So we're going to do everything in terms of um, as of the end of this, of 2010, beginning of 2011. So under option one, he will end up with ten thousand dollars, and he will pay tax of three one one five. But even that amount will be discounted and he will end up with 7142 in his pocket. If he takes the second option, or it's, these, are, these aren't options, these are if it turns out this way, and he ends up having a different marginal rate um, in 2011, then the tax that he will pay will be di on this withdrawal will be different, excuse me, and he will end up with 5741 in hand. So just, this is sort of the, the in-pocket after all is said and done, same as it was before. And we note here that 15%, so the rate difference here is a uh, rate difference is 15% roughly, so 15%, and that translates to this 1,400-ish difference, okay? So the first part is about difference in timing. This one's about difference in rates, um, and we can see that both matter in terms of what we actually end up with in present value terms. Okay, problem three is this married couple um, with moving expenses. And so there's a num number of ways we can do this. So it, it tells us to compute the federal combined marginal tax rate. So we will do that, and then we have to decide who should deduct it. So whoever will deduct it will be the person with the higher marginal tax rate um, when considering this deduction. So again, multiple ways to do it, but I will do it this way. So we'll look at John first. So if John, he will have income, and if he takes the deduction, he'll have $80,000 of income. So if he does not, so well, let's do this, no deduction, and so that means Cindy would take it, and if he takes the deduction, instead his income will be, taxable income will be 65000 or 15000 lower. So his federal tax, and this is all referencing, so note, this is referencing what we handed out, so these are the 20... Uh, 10 rates from the supplemental stuff that's that is posted not the not the current 2011 rate so when you go to reference this go to the the what is posted so his federal tax is going to be 6109 that's his tax on the lower bracketed stuff plus 22 percent of the difference between 80 and the the bottom of this bracket, which is nine to forty nine to six. Okay, so you'll find those numbers in in the reading, and in this case that ends up being four 
15279. If you'll take my word for it, um, this one ends up being 11449. I won't bother annotating um, all of that. His federal credits, we're told, well, actually, we aren't told in this question, so we, we just, we're just we going to take them at, to be 2100, which is roughly 1500 um, basic, uh, for the basic personal, and then some CPP EI credits. Um, it's just a round number, which we essentially pulled out of the air, but it's somewhat reasonable. So then his provincial tax, a little bit more complicated. So he will pay, again, these are referenced in the, or these are given in the handout that we have. So he pay. this is the stuff on, the 5269 is on the lower brackets, then he pays 11.16% on the difference between his 80 and the bottom of this bracket, which is 74214. So you can see the federal and provincial brackets are very different. So this number ends up being 5914. And then we actually have to take our credits. So we want to kind of cheat over here and say, after credits, how much tax will I pay? Uh, 5214. Because 5214 is now used for the surtax. So he's going to actually pay 20% on his tax. Now a surtax means sur like it's tax on tax. So 20% of 5214 minus 4006, which is just the threshold that th they had in place that year, plus 36% on the amount that is above an, a higher threshold, and that year it was 5127. Okay, so when I add all of this up, I get 5214. Uh, did I do these numbers here? Yeah, this is 242, and this is 87. So these add up to 329. So when I go back to put in the schedule, my, ta my Ontario tax payable is 5914. My credits are uh, 700. So let's just kind of label that. Uh, I don't know where I can fit that. Just put it here, credits. And then my surtax is 329 surtax. Okay, so when I add all of this, oh, and so the numbers over here actually are, are not, I can't just fill them in. So we have, I can just fill in this one. Um, so this is 18, actually it's not as simple as that. So 18, 7, 2, 7, 4, because he's in a different provincial bracket after this. So 0. 0.9, and this is the whole point of the question. Marginal tax rates are sometimes very simple, and sometimes we actually have to uh, do a fair bit of calculating. So 1874 times 9.15 times the difference between 65 and the bottom of this bracket, which is 108. So that's this number. And as it turns out in this case, he's below. So here's the threshold for, uh, so he has the same credits. So his tax here, we can eyeball it and say it's $3,700. That's below this threshold here, this 4006. So he has no surtax in this case. Okay, so this is basically illustrating how things get more complicated than one would like sometimes. So, so 13, these columns add up to, here's our total tax burden um, under these two things. So the difference here is 5117. I divide that by the difference in the incomes, which is $15,000, the amount of the deduction, and that tells me that his marginal tax rate is 34.1%, okay? So that's all the work we had to do for him. Now for Cindy, we could repeat the same thing. And we could say, okay, let's start at the top, do the full calculation, but you can see I'm out of space, and so I, maybe there's a shortcut, and indeed there is. Because when we look at the brackets for her, whether she has the deduction or not, um, whether she takes the deduction or not, her feder she's in the top federal bracket. So her federal is going to be 26. She's not in the top, sorry. She's in the second to the top, and she's, she's in it regardless. So these dollars stay within that bracket. So she just had um, 26%. Then secondly, Ontario, she's also, it stays in the same bracket. So in this case, she's going to pay 11.16% times 1.56. So these, this is the surtax um, portion of it. This is the, the marginal rate at the, 
uh, in the top Ontario bracket. So does that change over here? It actually does not. So we're, we're shortcutting this. So please understand that we could have and maybe should have done this full kit and caboodle again for um, Cindy and we would have ended up at the same place which which is just add up these numbers and you get to 43.4 percent okay so we compare this to this and we say therefore Cindy should deduct okay so final question problem four all we have to do is say okay now what if things change again and so what this problem is about, if Cindy takes, if Cindy takes them, they get their tax savings one year earlier. Okay, so we're introducing a time shift and a rate shift at this, or time difference and rate difference in the same question. So again, if we we're, we eyeball this and say, okay, John is going to make one hundred and forty thousand dollars. Or, uh, or so somewhere between 125, 140, and 125. The difference being the the 15 of deduction, right? So um, there is now we're going to cheat a little bit here, but the, there is a bracket, or was a bracket in 2010 that that ended at 127.021. So there is this $2,000 wiggle room that where he actually does drop down, and so maybe a full calculation would have been necessary, but we're going to cheat a little bit because we've done that in the previous question we could do it again but we want to move on to the finer points so he is in the top federal and provincial which we know to be 29 that's the federal and the provincial we saw before 11.16 times 1.56 for the surtax so he's at 46.4 okay so we're pretty sure she's gonna come in below that but let's just see so Cindy is has more than she did in the other question it's 125 so what do we know about her well at, oh wait is this it is the same amount what did she have in the previous no she had a hundred but if we go if you go back and check the brackets um, she stays in the same bracket so she stays in the same bracket and so the calculations that we did in the previous part still hold for her so her rate is 43.4 but we have not yet considered the tax savings or I'm sorry the time uh, difference the time value of money difference so we have him at 46.4 but a year later so we say tax saved uh, one year from now Uh, at 46.4 percent what is that worth to us so what's a dollar saved worth today well it's worth 46.4 cents discounted at the rate that they give us so they say their discount rate which you know we are always given these things we need to have some understanding of what they are but their discount rate is that so we discount by that and we get to 44.2 okay so we are not going to compare this orange to this apple instead we're going to compare this and this now John t still so this is John make sure I move back on John discounted so John discounted is still higher but we understand they're a lot closer and what if I just you know say well what if that discount rate was slightly different what about 46 divide if I discount it at uh, six percent what does he end up at? Well, he's still 43 and change, 43.8, but he's getting a whole lot closer. So this is very sensitive to the discount rate that we assume in terms of, of who we, who we uh, um, have take the deductions. But the point being that this is the whole point of this. Don't forget to discount when you're comparing um, things or we'll have apples and oranges being compared, and that just can't be.